the real message that I'd like to convey is, is very similar to, to Dr. DeFeo over here, is, is that, that basic science and, and the fun and zeal in doing it and how it can, um, you can, you can still pursue your passion and wanting to solve problems while at the same time really saving lives by, by using this knowledge to develop cures and, and therapies for, for different diseases. And so I'll start kind of back uh, to the very basic stuff for those of you without a science background. Um, and, and I'll just look around and, and uh, talk a little bit about genetics. And you guys have heard about this, the genes that you inherit from your parents and what makes you a little bit different or, or similar to, to other people, what gives you the, the color of your eyes and the color of your, uh, your, um, your skin and your hair and, and how tall or short you might be. And, um, and so, so what I'd also like to say is that those genetics are um, also very similar. Um, and if we took the, the genes of everybody in this room and, and compared them, they, they'd actually be about 99.9% .9 the same. And it's really just that 0.1% that, that makes us different and unique in who we are. And actually, if we expanded that a little bit more, then, then you could include the, the, the baker's yeast that you use to make bread or, or to brew beer with. And, and we would actually have the same genome, about 97% of that genome would be the same as us. And so a lot of those genes just go into the, the basic functions of what we need to do to live and, and making the proteins and the RNA or the DNA and, and all of the, the molecules within our body that, that helps us to, to grow. And so, so there's a lot of us in, in research who focus in on, on one little area, it seems like one little area, but there's a lot of, of things to do still to understand this. Um, and so, so within those genes, they're stored in, in, inside the cell, so, so we're all just millions of cells working together to perform the functions. Uh, some of those cells become specialized to be bone or skin or, or whatever. Um, but within each of those cells, then it stores our genetic code in the form of, of 23 chromosomes, these wiry, spindly things that are connected by, by building blocks of DNA. Um, and the, those DNA is, is, is very simplistic to make such a complex organism. And so, so DNA is composed of only four building blocks. So, so adenines and guanosines and cytosines and thymines or ACs, Gs and Ts. Um, and, and just like a cipher, it's, it's the, the order of those inside the DNA that, that codes for the special uh, genes that make us unique. And in fact, um, uh, Ancestry and 23andMe are, are really exploiting this and, and making it more valuable for, for everybody to know this, is, but back to that 0.1% that I referred to, and you can really use that to see how you're different, where you're from. Um, and, and so what I'd like to talk about for the, 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 the chromosome part is, is it's a linear strand of these DNAs hooked together and, and having this difference in, in sequence. Um, but then at the end is this specialized structure called the telomere. And this is, comes from, the, the, it's named after the, the Greek uh, uh, terminology of, of telo meaning end and mirror meaning part. And so the telomere is a special part of the chromosome and that end part. Um, and so you've probably heard of uh, uh, something like on a shoelace, this aglet and how it compares. Um, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's not just, just um, protective. Um, but if you did compare it to this aglet, then you have to have this, this hard little plastic shell there to, to, to keep the, the telomere from fraying and being damaged and, and causing these other um, adverse effects that you didn't want to happen. Um, and so the other thing about telomeres is they get shorter as we age. And so, so if we took the blood out of everybody in this room or saliva and, and analyzed the DNA and ran the telomere out on a gel, then, then you guys would all have pretty long telomeres that, that being younger and, and mine, I guess, that I'm rarely in a room where I would say I would probably have the, the shortest telomeres, but, but as we get more advanced in our age, then our telomeres also get shorter. And so it's also been known that now that these telomeres it's shorten, that it can also be used as a, a sort of marker for that overall health of the cell. And so in addition to aging, then if you compare to, to your colleagues who, who might have been lifelong smokers or who don't live a healthy lifestyle, but they're the same age, they might have shorter telomeres. And so this is also being used, to, as, a, as a Dr. DeFeo alluded to, there's a way of using this as a potential marker 
uh, to predict overall health and, and look at your lifestyle and see if things you might need to change. And so in this case, since the, the telomeres are getting shorter, then there have also been uh, compared to uh, 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 the fuse on a bomb. And so that when things get shorter and shorter, then, then you eventually get to the end and, um, and get catastrophe happens when it gets, gets short enough. Um, and so, so why do we have telomeres? We, as I've we've discussed, and most of you have probably heard this aglet comparison, um, the telomeres are protecting the ends of our, our linear chromosomes. But the other reason is this shortening phenomenon and, and, and how they protect against the loss of our genetic information. And so if we have this, this long stretch of, of DNA and they are getting shorter, as, as uh, I'll explain in a little bit, then, then we could lose our genetic information and then it would cause uh, uh, pretty adverse effects and, and, and um, lead to, to multiple diseases, including death. Um, and so, so with this telomere, then it's, it's uh, in humans, it's a repetitive sequence. So, so it's TTA, GGG, over and over and over. And so when you're born, it's, it's um, in your blood cells, the telomere is around 10,000 of these DNA building blocks. And then when you're in your 70s or 80s, this is shortened to about um, 1,500. And so at this point um, in the cell, so, it, so in addition to, to being a, a biological uh, clock to tell how old you are, it also uh, tells how, how um, old the cell is or, or healthy. And so if we wanted to um, use this as a, a marker, so, so why do we have telomeres? And in addition to protection, why are they getting shorter? And so this comes down to divisions and, and some cell biology. And if the, the cell is dividing, so we, our cells are constantly dividing, so we need to replenish bone and blood. And if you cut your hand, you need to replenish those cells. And so cells are always dividing to keep us healthy. And then for the, the cell to divide, then each copy of the cell needs its own DNA so that we have the full gene uh, information in those cells. And so when, when these uh, DNA must get copied first, and then each cell that divides can have its own copy of DNA to continue through this process. And so the problem is that the, the machinery that copies the DNA, these polymerases, they just can't quite get to the end of, of any uh, linear strand of DNA. And so in this case, it's if you have a, a long, thin hallway and, and your parents tell you to go clean the floor and give you mop, and so you start at one end and start mopping, and you get to the end, and then you back up to the wall where you can mop all the way to the very end, except for the space where you're standing. And so this is kind of a, a similar physical limitation on the polymerases that need to copy our DNA genome. And so consequently, with each round of division, we're losing of that little bit of, of uh, floor space where we can't get to the, with the mop. So, um, so, so consequently, then, then our telomere, our linear chromosomes would get shorter and shorter, and they do, as I've, I've said. Um, and so, this is part of the natural aging process. And so, this repetitive TTAGGG is is there just to absorb this shortening effect. And so now we can um, have healthy cells dividing, and, and although the, the telomeres get shorter, then they don't. Uh, we're not losing our genetic information. And so at some point, we will divide, these cells will divide enough to where the telomeres get so short that, that we will risk losing genetic information if they get any shorter. And at that point, then there's a signaling process that tells the, stop, the cell to stop dividing and, and not take that risk. Um, and then, then the cells go into this uh, state of uh, where they no longer divide. It's called senescence. And they um, kind of hover in space or, or die and, and get uh, replaced by a fresh set of, of cells from the stem cell population. And so you can think about, um, in some certain, so, so in general, a cell divides, about, so it loses about 50 nucleotides or 50 DNA building blocks per division. And so this division happens about 50 to 70 times before the cells can no longer divide because of this, this consequence. And so you can imagine a couple of scenarios where you might want this to happen, where you need uh, multiple divisions. And if you think about um, the stem cell population or something that, that had a limited capacity, then they couldn't replace uh, your healthy cells. 
Or in the case of um, conception, and when a, an egg is fertilized, it's a single cell and it needs to divide into, into millions of cells to create a human. And so, in, or in to, to create an organism. And so in these cases, then they need something else that, that will allow it to bypass this, um, this, uh, this state of re replicative uh, uh, stalling. And so those cells actually use a, a, uh, a specialized enzyme that's called telomerase. And telomerase, the, the sole function is to grab onto the end of the telomere and, and to extend it. And so with this, uh, uh, it's been known for about the last 30 years, the telomeres of telomerase were um, really characterized by a couple of labs and just earned the, the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 2009. Um, and shortly after it was, it was really characterized, it was found that, um, that so, so how these, these telomeres and telomerase functioned. And so it was realized that in those cells, like stem cell populations, or during embryogenesis, when, when cells are dividing rapidly, the telomerase does get upregulated, and now those cells no longer have this telomere shortening effect. And so in, in this case, then, um, then it's a, it's a case where, where it is activated, but then telomerase is it deactivated when our, our cells have developed, or when we have developed, and, and no longer is there. And so you might be thinking, well, well this might be a way to, to prohibit aging. And in fact, if you look at telomeres, if you guys Google on your phones right now and find telomeres, you'll probably find some sort of magic cream to, that's supposed to promote telomere length and, and health and growth. and um, and, and all of those things. But the, the problem with that then is that it's, it's, um, it, it could potentially work, but the problem is that, that cancer cells have also figured out how to reactivate telomerase. And so now in, instead of just the normal aging process and, and shortening of telomeres in our cells, if we reactivate telomerase, then those cells divide over and over and over and they can create uh, tumors and, and uh, un uncontrolled division, which, which then leads to cancer. And so within these, uh, our genome, it's, it's really about three billion nucle DNA nucleotides. And so over the course of these replicative and when, when these are getting synthesized and copied and cells are dividing, then, then this is happening about once every day or so. And, and there's a lot of opportunity for these polymerases to make a mistake in, in, or a mutation in the DNA. Um, and this actually happens probably hundred thousands of times per, per cell division. And fortunately, we have enzymes that go and correct for that and look for mistakes and, and fix it. Um, and some of them are tolerated and, and change our, our genes a little bit. Um, but so, so one of the things when people talk to us about cancer and why haven't we dis discovered a cure for cancer yet, uh, the, the, the real complication is that it's not like a virus where we just figure out how the virus infects the cell, how the virus replicates its own genome, and then we can make a small molecule drug to stop that. The complication with cancer is, uh, is within these three billion genes that are being copied, then a mutation can arise almost anywhere. And so then the consequence is much different within the, the, the cell for if a, a mutation happens in one place versus another. Um, the other thing that makes it complicated is that, that the cancer cells are still using all of the basic cell machinery that, that, that our healthy cells are. It just changes the rate of growth or um, changes something that, that will um, cause it to, to grow into this tumor. And so that's what, what makes it really challenging is how do you target a cancer cell without affecting uh, all the healthy cells? And, and as we've heard a little bit earlier, um, that that's, that's one of the side effects of chemotherapy, that it does just uh, target dividing cells, and since cancer cells are dividing uh, more rapidly than, than healthy cells, then, then the chemo has a little bit more of a, an adverse effect on those. Um, and so this is where telomerase does give a, a nice um, distinction where it is active in, in cancer cells, but, but is presumably turned off in healthy cells. And so researchers have known this for several um, decades, and, and there's been a lot of work that goes into, for this purpose, to develop a, a drug that will inhibit telomerase. And most drugs are built to, to design to, to abrogate the natural process or to inhibit the, the, the natural process of an enzyme. 
And so in the lab, there's a lot of success in developing telomerase inhibitors. There's several that, that work very well in the lab. Um, but the problem is that once we get it into the clinic, it doesn't have quite the same success as it does in the lab. And this is probably due to, the, 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 to everything I've just talked to you about, that if we can inhibit telomerase in a tumor cell, and we've successfully done that, then it still takes multiple divisions for these telomeres to get short enough to, to stop, to kill the cancer cell. And these, these cancers are, are pretty smart and they figure ways of resistance or other ways to, to maintain immortality over the time that it would take to, ask, to successfully kill the, the tumor this way. And so in my lab, we've been working on something kind of similar. We like this idea that, that telomerase is selective for cancer cells and we could target it directly. Um, but instead of inhibiting it, we've, we've taken a slightly different approach where we can use the enzyme kind of like a, a Trojan horse and have it deliver toxin, or toxins to the, the DNA of the cancer cells. And so in this approach, then we would, would give it a small molecule drug, it would go into a healthy cell, nothing happens because there's no telomerase there and, and hopefully there's no adverse effects with this drug. Um, but then in the, the contrast with these cancer cells, then telomerase is highly re upregulated. It can grab this drug we've delivered, put it into the telomere or the DNA of the cancer cell, and then lead to cell death that way. And so we've made a little bit of headway um, on the basic science uh, portion of this, and, and we've just published a, a paper in it this last uh, summer, and we're now uh, starting to work with, with other cancer biologists like uh, Dr. DeFeo and, and other researchers at um, Case Western Reserve University, and, and um, so we have a, a lot of hope for this. And, um, but the, the, the basic point is, is just back to the beginning is that this was all uh, from, stems from basic science. You, you need to learn how the biology works and, and once you know what goes wrong in the disease states or how it works, how the, the, the different enzymes should function in the cell, then you're better armed to develop these therapies and, and to potentially come up with compounds that can, can treat patients.